Hello, and welcome to the final game of the regular season. Uh, this is the last game that we can lose and not get it completely eliminated from the league this season. Our opponent this week is Nono. I have played him a couple times before. I've definitely lost to him at least once, so he is a very good battler. And his team is also really strong this week. Uh, he's got the Urshifu Rapid form, which, you know, it's like number one or number two in VGC right now. So making it in draft and it, it being, you know, having less counters on each team makes it even harder to deal with. He's brought it every week. He's brought the Heatran every week. And then his next two are kind of interesting. He swapped out Zapdos for Thunderous Incarnate on week four. He brought Zapdos all three weeks he had it, and he's brought Thunderous all three weeks since, so we can kind of anticipate that he brings it again. And then he had an Uxi that he brought to four games, four out of five, uh, before he traded it for Hatterene this last week. So I can only assume he's going to bring the Hatterene as well. And that kind of leaves him uh, left deciding what he wants his last Mons to be. So he's got the Arbeliva, which is good in Trick Room. He's got the Persian, that's a really good fast support. Don Fan is a really strong uh, physical attacker that he actually doesn't have that many of unless Thunderous goes physical and obviously Urshifu. And then Persian can go either way, but it's not very strong. Uh, Skip Loom is his Rage Powder user. It's got Sleep Powder. It's annoying the times he has used it. It's put in a lot of work for him. He's got Fletchinder, which is like uh, Priority Tailwind and not a whole lot else. I guess it can be offensive but its offensive stats are even lower than Talonflame so I don't expect much out of it and then he's got the Star uh, Staravia that was part of his trade to upgrade Uxie to Hatterene so I think he just grabbed something with Intimidate for one point I uh, don't really anticipate it but if it comes it's good because we are bringing a Staravia counter if only by accident so let's get into the team all right, so for the team this week, we do once again have kind of a dedicated lead. Uh, even though he has quite a few mons slower than my slowest outside of Slowbro, or Slowpoke, I do think Trick Room is pretty valuable against him because I don't think he'll anticipate it. And uh, beside that, Slowpoke is actually a really good defensive check to the Urshifu. It resists the dual stab. With Eviolite, it takes very minimal damage. So I thought it was worth bringing it even just for that this week, honestly. So you might notice we're running the Frisk Grimmsnarl this week as opposed to commonly running Prankster because it's the better ability. I think that the priority fake out is enough to dissuade him from knocking out Slowpoke in one hit. And Frisk is actually going to let us know where the Covert Cloak is. So I know where to not fake out because uh, if Slowpoke gets knocked out game one and doesn't set Trick Room, we probably just lose. Oblivious uh, stops it from being taunted, but obviously it can still be put to sleep. It can still be faked out by the Persian. So we want to try to prevent as much of that as possible. So that's why we have this Grim Snarl. Another good benefit of this Grim Snarl is if we're setting Trick Room with Slowpoke, we can go for Parting Shot on Grim Snarl. And it's likely to go last, so we can pivot out into Gudra immediately with four turns of Trick Room remaining. And with that, we can Bulldoze with Slowpoke. Uh, do minimal damage, but break sashes on the other side, even though he does have, I think, four flying types to counter the one Heatran ground weakness. But we can bulldoze, activate our own weakness policy, and the coverage we have on this Gudra should one-shot pretty much everything. If he terrestrializes the Heatran, that might be a little bit more difficult. But otherwise, the Gudra is just huge. Dragon Pulse should always one-shot Urshifu, We've got the Muddy Water as a spread move. Ice Beam obliterates Skip Bloom, and Sludge Bomb is good for any Grass Terras he might decide to go for, as well as any Fairy Terras. I think we definitely bring the Gudra Game 1. Whether it comes again, I'm not sure, because it's a very straightforward set. Obviously, this is some of the least intricate EV spreads I've done this season, where you get the most benefit if you give either three or five st stats uh, at least four points. Uh, with Trick Room, you normally don't want to run speed and you don't want to run your other offense, so you end up wasting points either way unless you just build into three stats. And I really didn't need those four points in extra. So, like, Brave Grim Snarl already does plenty of damage. The extra little bit I could give it into attack wouldn't really matter. Kind of the same with Gudra. A little bit of extra defense really doesn't change most of the calcs. It might make it live a close combat. 
uh, without tarrying, but otherwise, not really. We've got the Sap Sipper. I debated Shell Armor on Gudra because obviously we could avoid the crits, but if we're Water Terra anyway, uh, the Rapid Strike does not matter. So I liked not being able to be put to sleep by the Skip Bloom better. And then our last Pokemon we're bringing for game one will matter a lot on what his team is because we do have the Spectre that kind of depends on the Terra. We have the Shadow Ball and the Terra Blast fighting, very good coverage into his team. Shadow Ball doesn't really hit anything except Hatterene super effectively, but it's really good neutral coverage. And then Terra Fighting just deals with a lot of the things that resist Shadow Ball. We got the Nasty Plot because I think with a Fake Out from Grimmsnarl, we can get it set up or by forcing switches with Slowpokes Yawn. Plus two Spectre is kind of the same as Gudra, where it just kind of blows through everything. Uh, the last two I debated on a lot. I did leave off Landris again this week. I liked it at first, but the more I looked at it, the more I was like, I don't know if I need to bring you. So we've got the Choice Scarf Delphox. I think uh, it's really useful with Heat Wave to two-shot a lot of his Pokemon. We've got Psychic to one-shot Urshifu, and we always outspeed it, even if it's Scarfed. We've got the Focus Blast. It's probably my least favorite move in the game, but we've got Focus Blast to deal with Heatran and Persian if we absolutely need to. And then I think tricking the Scarf is actually... Kind of my main want from Delphox because I want to trick it onto something like Skip Bloom and just completely neuter its supportive capabilities. Uh, finally, we've got Braviary. And this was honestly Landris for a long time. But I think he could definitely bring Adrenaline Orb similar to Jayscurf uh, and beat me with getting a plus one speed on something. So I think it was better to leave Intimidate off this week, especially because one of his only two realistic physical attackers is critting all the time and the other one has defiant if he runs it physical so there's just not really a point in me bringing intimidate landorus so i liked braviary better also because he has the persian alola that likes to run a lot of icy wind snarl he has a lot of uh members on his team that could be dropping my stats so i think defiant's good here we always live uh surging strikes pretty comfortably it's a roll against like banded close combat on Braviary, and then our coverage on it is also just really solid. His team doesn't have a lot of great flying checks, but the ones that do don't like taking a rock slide or a close combat. So the hope is we set up Trick Room, win round one, and then we pivot to our fast mode and have either Grimmsnarl support or Slowpoke support, as funny as that might sound, uh, game two. If we end up losing one of those games, we pivot and we try to counter him as best we can. But we're going to use Grimmsnarl a lot game one, trying to switch in and out to learn as many of his items as possible. And really uh, kind of download his team building. So yeah, let's get into the battle. And we're back. And we see that Nono has an interesting team, for sure. Let's just look at what he did and didn't bring. I only see one flying type. I don't see a skip bloom. So I think that's a good sign. We don't have to worry about any Rage Powder, Sleep Powder. Um, it does make uh, Gudra's Sap Sipper a little worse, but that could still be useful into the Arboliva, I suppose. So we did not bring Lycanroc, we did not bring Landorus, we didn't bring Breloom, and we didn't bring Basculin. I'm hoping he was threatened by Basculin because I made a big deal of talking about picking it specifically to counter uh, both of the forms of Urshifu. So hopefully he prepped for it. Um, so if we look at his weaknesses, now that we've cleared out the mons, he's not bringing, he's really weak into ice. So Ice Beam shreds his team outside of Urshifu and Heatran. So everybody's very curious about the slow poke and luckily they'll get to see it instantly. So let's write down his Terra types real quick. This has got the Urshi, which is water, makes sense. Still shouldn't knock out Braviary. Uh, might be a better roll in his favor against things like the Spectre A, but we'll have to deal with that when it happens. He's got the Hatterene, which is a grass type. Uh, makes a lot of sense, grass types, which is why I brought Sludge Bomb and Ice Beam. He's got the Heatran, which is a flying type. He's got the Thunderous, which is a dark type, so it's immune to Prankster. So that's cool because we're not Prankster. He's got the Arboliva, which is electric type. Hmm. And the Dawn fan, which is grass type. Okay. So we know our first lead. It's Grimmsnarl, Slowpoke. We do Gudra in the back. Who's our best fourth? Um, fighting coverage goes kind of hard in this game. His Shadow Ball switch in is only Arboliva. So that's nice. Choice Scarf Delphox could be good. He didn't bring the 
Persian. So Braviary is a little worse here, but he still could have some stat dropping on like Eerie Impulse Thunderous. Braviary is pretty strong here. And I think with the Citrus Berry, it could be really good in the back. Normally I regret leaving off Spectre, but I don't really want to give away that I'm Clear Amulet yet. I want him to wonder kind of where it is. So my opponent's still picking. Uh, oh, and he has decided. So we lead R2. So there's Hatterene is the Cassaberry, and Dawn Fan is the clear amulet. So good to know we can't parting shot the Dawn Fan. So it looks like we both brought Trick Room, which is pretty sick. Cassaberry, so I can't one shot this with Shadow Ball. So that makes Spectre actually quite a bit worse. Now, if we do a quick calc, we look at our Slowpoke into a Dawn Fan that's Terra Grass, because that's not scary at all. Terra Grass. Terra Blast, Sea Bomb, same thing. Oh, it's level 100, that's not very useful. It's only doing about half. So what I think we can do is fake out the Hatterene here and just go for a Trick Room. Uh, we do fake out the Hatterene, do 9%. He high, high horsepower is almost, does 50% to Grim. We get our Trick Room up. Um, Hatterene, I'm a little nervous that he was going for Trick Room there, but I think we're okay. Uh, I will Parting Shot into the, oh, I can't Parting Shot, huh? I can force Hatterene out by Parting Shotting it, but then I reduce Grim Snarl stats. So I think I hard switch into Gudra here and I just click Bulldoze because then I lower my own speed and I actually have to Bulldoze Hatterene twice to make it slower than Bro, so that's good. So I'll switch Gudra in, go for the Bulldoze. Hopefully he doesn't high horsepower. If he does, you know, I couldn't do anything about it. I couldn't parting shot, I couldn't do any different switches. He gleams and okay, he high horsepowers that slot again. Plan did not work. So, Gudra is wasted. It's not good. Maybe the Trick Room wasn't the play. I guess I shouldn't have switched in where he's obviously going for high horsepower. But, I don't know. That's a pretty offensive Dawn fan from what I can tell. If we look at Grim Snarl into it. Yeah, I mean, it's doing like... It wasn't max attack. or probably is not max attack, but it's pretty offensive. So I should have known better than to try to force that. I just can't parting shot into this duo. It's... It's definitely an interesting decision. So we'll fake out the Hatterene again. And I will just go for a yawn into the Dawn fan. I need Braviary to work overtime now. Super strong lead into all of my possible leads. I didn't expect Dawn fan to be as useful as it's showing to be. So he does high horsepower. He gets the roll that time. So it is a roll. So this is really awkward now because uh, yeah, we're Braviary and Trick Room. So we'll just protect for a turn. I could go for another Bulldoze, get a little chip. Slowpoke's not really doing much here. I could also double Yawn into the Dawn Fan, expecting him to switch that out. So we'll do that. I don't think he wants it to go to sleep. Uh, yeah, so he does double it. We protect Braviary for a turn. Yawn, the Heatran coming in. We didn't learn any more of his items, which is not great. And he just gleams. It does another 25% to Bro, so we can kind of get an idea of... Or Slowpoke. So we can kind of get an idea of how offensive the Hatterene is. Not very offensive, all things considered. Could go for a Flying Terra on the Heatran. I could go for a Double Protect because it is the last turn of Trick Room. I think he does want to switch that out. If I Electric Terra, I just need to stay faster than Dawn Fan. And Electric Terra means Nuzzle doesn't paralyze me. So I was a little worried about Nuzzle. I think I will go for that. I will just rock slide. I think that's my best play, anticipating Heatran might want to Terra. And I will just go for a helping hand onto the Braviary. Okay, does switch in Dawn Fan. We helping hand. Gleam does respectable damage. We rock slide. Really don't do much. Yeah, this Dawn Fan's a problem, huh? It's unfortunate. Our Gudra set was so good, but. Also so weak to a Dawn fan just spamming high horsepower. We're really not doing much to the Dawn fan. And if we're Electric Terra, high horsepower is doing a lot back. With a helping hand, yeah, we probably don't knock it out. So I think we have to go for a flinch, unfortunately. 
So yeah, I kind of messed myself up this first game. We'll just go for a helping hand rock slide. It's not my best move, but I don't have another option. Yeah, how horsepower just knocks out Braviary. And the trick room mode absolutely did not work. Yeah, that was not the play. Gudra was our main offensive answer. And we, I really just didn't prep much for that Dawn Chan at all, huh? So I didn't really talk about the implications of these games. But if I win, I am guaranteed second seed. If I lose, I'm either third or fourth seed, which uh, changes who I play against in quarters of playoffs. Obviously, uh, it's not great <laughs> that we let the first game go like that. It really wasn't a contest. I just let my main offensive Mon go down immediately to Dawn Fan. So that was not very smart on my part. I probably should have switched it on the bro slot and uh, just had Grimmsnarl go down and then bring bro back in. I think that would have been the better play. So, yeah. I mean, we didn't learn that much from that battle. We know Hatterene is Dazzling Gleam. It's Cassid Berry. We know that Don Fan is high horsepower. Wait, did he only show one move for Pokemon? Yes. <laughs> Man literally clicked two moves into me and beat me because I was too stubborn to go away from my original plan. Which, hey, if it works, it works, right? Um... Grimstar is really bad into that lead. The best thing I can do is Spirit Break the Hatterene, but even then, it's not that good. So, I think forcing something to be Scarfed immediately is nice, but then the Dawn Fan just threatens me with a knockout. So, that thing is way more annoying than I thought. I didn't prep at all for it. Other than the Gudra, that if, <laughs> if I'm under speeding, then it doesn't matter unless I get Trick Room up. So if I'm at plus two with Spectre into Hatterene, do I knock it out through a Kassib? Probably not, right? Yeah, it does like 75%, so it's not a full knockout. So I would need to hit it with Grim too, and I'm slow Grim, so he may well outspeed me. I think I can lead Delphox this game. I don't think he switches up his lead, but he might. And I will go Grim's just so bad as a lead here. I, it really, he counterteamed me with Dawn Fan plus Kassib, um, Hatterene. Like, that's just really hard for me to deal with. I will lead my offensive special kind of duo. Um, Grim, Gudra really was not able to do anything, but it's so good into some of his team. It might still warrant bringing in the back, but I don't know. Yeah, I've kind of screwed myself with this half and half trick room team, unfortunately. Uh, we'll bring the Braviary again. Maybe I'll lead with the Grimstarl anyway and go for a fake out Shadow Ball and then threaten Hatterene with a Shadow Ball KO the next turn. Uh, that really leaves me nowhere with Dawn Fan, though. Does he wave Shadow Ball even KO Dawn Fan? I don't even know. I think I'll actually lead with the Delphox plus Grimstarl. I'll have these two in the back. We'll see if this works better. So he leads the same, or no, it does not lead the same two. He's Citrus Berry, so he's Harvest uh, Arbolova. So versus that with Delphox. This might be our first O2. Um, he just absolutely brought amazing prep versus me, and I don't have a whole lot of answers to it, and that's, you know, good on him. Uh, he wave should two shot the Arbolova if it's just max health. Of course, it does have Citrus Berry, so maybe not. Uh, we can trick, force something here into using the same move every turn. I think I actually will trick the Hatterene, because even with Magic Bounce, we can trick. Or we could take away the Citrus Berry. That's actually not a bad idea, because then it can't heal. But then the Hatterene is still just so annoying. <laughs> we just need a little bit of chip on Hatterene, though, for Spectre to be able to deal with it. So I think I can trick the Arbolova. It's not really a threat though with Brave Bird. And I think I will just fake out the Hatterene. Protects the Arbolova. Okay, double protects, seeing what I'm doing. So I go for the fake out, I reveal a trick. So now he knows I'm trying to give away my item, which is probably a scar for his specs. So he probably switches the Arbolova swat, uh, slot. He probably goes for an offensive move with something like Hatterene. 
I could force the Hatterene to switch here, but I still don't know who's faster between Hatterene and Grimmsnarl, unless that was shown last game, because I just faked out both times against Hatterene, so I never really got to see who was faster. Uh, I can trick. Obviously, I'm locked into it. I'll check the Hatterene side this time, and I will just Spirit Break into the Arboliva. Does bring it into Heatran, I give uh, Hatterene a Scarf. Even with a scarf, we're faster with Grim. Okay, because he went for Trick Room. Okay, that checks out. So, Trick Room's now up, and we are using our non-Trick Room mode. So that's uh, not optimal. I don't know if this is an offensive Heatran. We are really slow Grim, so we can just Parting Shot here, which is kind of nice. I could Focus Blast into the Heatran, um, as much as I hate the move. If it's offensive, I mean, we're not KOing, but we're doing a ton. I think I will go for it. I don't have too much to lose at this point. I assume Hatterene switches out. So we'll parting shot into the Heatran as well. So he does switch. Here's Dawn Fan. He goes for the Flying Terra. We weaken it, which is good. It's halved special attack. And we'll go into Braviary here. Uh, he goes for Magma Storm. Only does 28. We actually hit Focus Blast, but it's too little too late because he's a flying type now. So that's interesting. Magma Storm doing 28. So it would have done 56. Braviary into Heatran, 56. So that's offensive, like modest offensive. I do want to bring Grimmsnarl back in, figure out what item it is. And I do want to stall his Trick Room, but I also... <laughs> don't want to take more magma storm actually if i take one more magma storm it should not me into citrus range i'll be at more health than i was last turn so he switches heatran back into hatterene we frisk and we know his items so he's really not giving us much information there any ice spinners braviary so that's good to know it does have the ice spinner uh so hat is scarfed here if it's trick room speed it's only at 45 right now um, so he still undercuts Grim in Trick Room, so Parting Shot wouldn't work. Does a Modest... I don't think a Modest Gleam ever knocks out Grim. I think I built it in a way that it always lived one. We've got two more turns of Trick Room to contend with. He doesn't have another Setter outside of the Hatterene. So I think here, Chip on Dawn Fan is more important than anything. And then if he spinners the slot again, I can go back into Delphox. But Delphox is my best way of uh, dealing with Arbolova other than this. I think if we can just get some chip down on the board, I think Spectre can win. So that's kind of the plan here. I do Spirit Break. That's 31. Yeah, Gleam comfortably live with Grim Snarl, And Ice Spinner doesn't do much to the Delphox. Now we've got a decision to make, though. I could have faked out one of the slots, but I don't know. I don't know if it was really worth it. I think I bring Braviary in for the Grim Snarl. He might expect it to come in for the Delphox. I can Heat Wave. The only problem with that is if he goes into Heatran. I don't think he switches here. I think he just goes pure offense. Probably high horsepower is the Delphox slot. Gleams to knock out the Grim Snarl. So I think I just I'm just gonna have to eat some more damage. I think him high horsepowering Delphox is more likely. So I'm gonna switch Grim into Spectre. I'm gonna switch Delphox into Braviary. We're gonna see if this works. Gleam does reasonable chip. We eat our citrus berry and we dodge the high horsepower. Nice. So we did call that play correctly. Now, can we get rid of this Dawn fan finally? We know he has Protect on both Mons, I think. Or, well, obviously he can't Protect with this, and he actually hasn't shown Protect on Dawn Fan, so that's good to know. Spectre into a Dawn Fan. We know it's not AV because it's Clear Amulet. Knockoff is potentially KOing us, and a Shadow Ball... Man, it's really not doing that much. We gotta go for it, though. We've gotta try to knock this guy out. I think I can ignore the Hatterene for another turn. It might want to switch out, especially without Kassib. 
I think I just double into this Dawn Fan, try to get rid of it. It hasn't shown Protect yet. It may definitely know it because I think Ice Ground coverage into my team is pretty solid on its own. He might have Shard. He might have Grass coverage. Okay, so it's not very bulky. So I guess more speed. Um, we do not get out with a double. Uh, both of our Pokemon can live one more Gleam. So we can ignore Hatterene for one more turn if we really want to. And then our Backmons, I can Terra Grimmsnarl. And it will live one more Dazzling Gleam. So that is a plus. Alternatively, the Dark Terror really doesn't get me much. Because that was mainly to deal with uh, Eerie Impulse Thunderous. So I think I double into the Heatran here, actually. We just go for a Shadow Ball. What does more damage between a Rock Slide and a Brave Bird? To a Heatran that's here a Flying... Uh, Brave Bird definitely does more damage, so we'll just go for that. He probably maybe protects it. We still don't know the item, but we do want to clear the Heatran slot as fast as possible. Brave Bird's also better if he doubles into our Bolova. With the Brave Bird recoil, we might get knocked out. Okay, so he switches our Bolova. We do double into the Heatran, and we do knock it out. Nice. So now whatever his Hatterene locks into on this turn, it's stuck into for the rest of the game. So he might just protect with uh, Arbolova while Hatterene goes for a Trick Room. I don't knock it out in one hit with Spectre. Pretty much no matter what, assuming it's at least max health. Uh, so he probably protects and Trick Rooms. We know Shadow Ball will do like 70 to 80 percent. Rock Slide does like 20. Yeah, Rock Slide did 21 last time each time we used it. So Brave Bird's safer. And I think we have enough power in the back to deal with the Arbolova. We have enough offense if he doesn't protect here. Okay, he doesn't protect. Shadow Ball doesn't knock out the Hatterene, but we do knock it out with our double up. Does he go for like a spread move? Just an energy ball. Knocks out the Spectra. Um, so Heat Wave is obviously going to do a ton of damage. Fake Out Brave Bird is also really strong. We want to get rid of that Citrus Berry. I can't steal it. Uh, that is an option. <sighs> it's tough. We can close out the game with a Brave Bird. Has he Terrid yet? Yes, he Terrid Heatran. Okay, so we're in good shape there. None of my Terras do anything except Grimmsnarl gets more Spirit Break damage. So I guess I'll go into that. We know he's Citrus Berry. Uh, so I'll just fake out Brave Bird. Obviously protects. Makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, there's no point in me terra this into a dark type. Unless he's earth power, I guess. And this into an electric type doesn't make any sense either. So I will just go for a fairy terra, spirit break, and a brave bird. I try to knock him out. I don't know that he even lives a brave bird. Um, probably shouldn't. Yeah, Brave Bird knocks it out. Okay, so we do manage to win game two. So we didn't get completely swamped, but it was hard fought. So I'm actually going to pause here real quick. I'm going to take some notes, and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. My man is keeping his sets um, close to his chest. He is not revealing a lot of what he's bringing. Luckily for me, I have also not revealed very much uh, in terms of my moves. Obviously this, he knows his Focus Blast trick and he knows it's Choice Scarf. So he knows I'm gonna try to lock him into something instantly with that. And he doesn't know this is Clear Amulet. So if he thinks I'm gonna try to win with it, he might just lead Thunderous this time. So far we haven't seen Thunderous or Urshifu at all, which is who I prepped the hardest for. Slowpoke, really not doing much for us here. Maybe it resists. Um, Maybe the Dawnfan doesn't have a grass type move and it's just uh, grass terra to avoid super effective damage. I mean, I think we bring the same four, honestly. I think the trick room mode is not doing anything for us. The only other reason we might bring it is if he gets trick room up with his Hatterene, then we can have Gudra in the back to take advantage of it. But even then, that's pretty risky. Uh, but who didn't do much for us last game? We got to lead Grim again. It's an always lead. Uh, we can lead Delphox again, but if we don't trick, then he knows we're choiced. But I think this is where he would switch up his play and maybe lead like Urshi Thundee. 
So I think it's good to bring the same four we did before. We'll lead the same two. I normally like switching it up, but because we brought two distinct modes, the Gudra and Slowpoke don't operate well alone. Like obviously Gudra can do some damage under Trick Room, but if he's also a Trick Room team, then his Arboliva, his Dawn Fan, and his Hatterene can all underspeed me anyway. Unless he did the VGC thing where they give them a little speed anyway. But I assume he just went mid-speed. So we see the same lead as round one. Did we see Protect on the Dawn Fan last game? I don't think we did. If we look real quick. Yep, Dawn Fan did not ever show Protect. So I can just fake out onto the Dawn Fan. And trick the Hatterene. If he switches it, he switches it. And that's okay. Uh, I think we're in good shape. The worst he could do is protect this, and then next turn, Dawn Fan could choose to KO Del Fox. And if that happens, we've got to deal with that next turn. I probably switch it into uh, Braviary and just preserve the scarf for later because I think it is pretty useful. This Dawn Fan, man, Dawn Fan is a surprising threat. I've never seen it used in VGC really, but I guess when he had so few other physical mons. This thing really fulfills a niche for him. It's a good slow attacker. Clear Amulet was great for Landorus. Does switch in the Heatran, so I do scarf the Heatran. Does show Protect on Dawn Fan, so good on him for uh, not showing that. Safety Goggles Heatran. I suppose for Spore Breloom. Uh, that checks out. That makes a lot of sense. We do have the Tantrum on Grimmsnarl if we decide to go for it. We should live a flash cannon. I'd love to double protect here, but I don't have protect on either of these Pokemon. <laughs> uh, Heatran. Yeah, he might think he walls us, but he might also just flying Terra again. Yeah, it should never knock out Grimmsnarl, so he would have to double it up to KO it this turn. So I think I call him not going for the Terra, and I go for a stomping, and then I switch into Braviary. He does Magma Storm, does quite a bit. High horsepower, so we dodge that again. And then Stomping Tantrum does a big chunk to the Heatran. So now his Heatran is scarfed into going for 75% accurate moves, which is not great for him. Um, Tantrum obviously knocked it really low, so he will want to knock out Grimmsnarl this turn. I really just need Chip on this Dawn Fan, truly. So I think I will just Spirit Break into it. Do we live an Ice Spinner after Brave Bird Recoil. Probably. So I think a safe enough play is just to Brave Bird. He does miss Magma Storm. It's going to happen. Brave Bird does 50% of the Dawn Fan. That's a lot more than I expected. High Horsepower does knock me out. I was trapped, so there wasn't really anything I could do in that situation. Now we have the Spectre that can pretty easily get a boost here. Because if that Brave Bird did 50% of Dawn Fan, he's not very bulky. He's got to have some attack... Maybe he's got a little speed on it. Alternatively, we could go into this. Psychic should knock out the Dawn Fan, and we resist the Magma Storm, so he'll more than likely go for it on the Braviary. Yeah, I think not showing him what our last Mon is yet would be smart. So we'll Psychic into the Dawn Fan. And does anything on Braviary knock out Heatran from here? I guess close combat. Although I really don't want to lower my defenses if I can help it. Ooh, level 5 Heatran, that's not quite right. Braver does 27% to non-bulk Heatran. So we could go for that. Also think I could just... Uh, if I close combat, I might just drop to the Dawn Fan instantly. Even though it does risk fainting here. I think I just close combat. I need to guarantee this KO. Okay, switches to Hatterene, which is a good play, and protects the Dawn Fan. So he dodges the Psychic and eats the close combat with ease because he four times resist. And now he's in a position where he can set up Trick Room pretty easily. We can try to knock out Dawn Fan here, but there's a non-zero chance that he switches it into Hatterene. Or sorry, not into Hatterene, into Heatran. And he also has not yet shown his fourth, which if he's going for Trick Room here, it's likely Arbolova. It's slightly less bulky than the one that's like the Sample Calc. Heat Wave's definitely not KOing. I really wish I had my scarf now, um, so I could trick the Hatterene. Could steal the clear amulet, that's not going to do anything. Man, I think if he gets Trick Room up, he's got too many turns. I won't be able to deal with the uh, the onslaught of offense. I will just Psychic the Dawn Fan. 
Man, I need to switch Braviary out though. Yeah, I think I get rid of Dawn Fan here. I switch Braviary into the Spectre, and then next turn I try to get rid of this Hatterene. Psychic should always kill this Dawn Fan unless it's just like 252 Spadef, 252 attack, because the physical attacks are doing more than I anticipated. So he's definitely not max health. So if he's fully built into Spadef, maybe he lives and good on him. Okay, so he does switch it into the Tran, so he probably is not going for Trick Room. Okay, he is going for Trick Room. I'm actually going to leave the Heatran alive then. I think it's in my best interest that this thing is locked in Choice Scarfed under Trick Room for me. I think that's a way that I can still get back in this. Interesting play I can make here is to trick away his Cassib Berry, and Shadow Ball would do a ton of damage to him. Uh, next turn, but also I could just chunk it. The problem is I can't really chunk uh, Hatterene very much with Delphox without giving Heatran a Flash Fire Boost. And if he locks into Magma Storm here, we really don't want to give it said Flash Fire Boost. It's four turns of Trick Room. I will just take away the Cassid Berry and go for Protect. We're gonna, we need this uh, Trick Room to end at the right time. Flash Cannon Dazzling Gleams. And we steal the Cassid Berry. Uh, that's a slow Heatran. Because... Huh. Very slow Heatran. Because it doesn't outspeed Delphox with a Choice Scarf. So that's odd. Um, does that combo of moves knock out my Spectre? Dazzling Gleam we know does like 33%. And a Heatran. That's modest. Flash Cannon is doing something along the lines of 50%. So we should live. Famous last words. So we'll go for Heat Wave because the Flash Fire Boost doesn't matter because he's locked into uh, Flash Cannon. And we'll just go for a Shadow Ball. So Gleams, there's the 33%. Flash Cannon, okay, 56%. We do live. Give him the Flash Fire Boost, does not matter. Knock out the Hatterene. He's got two Pokemon left in the back. He's got Dawn Fan. And he's got one more. So what does he go into? Dawn Fan's pretty safe. He can just high horsepower into uh, Delphox and Flash Cannon into Spectre for the double KO. Unless I were to Terra. But I think if I can get one more knockout, the Terra on Braviary is actually huge here because turning into an electric type means that Flash Cannon's doing nothing to us. I don't know. I could also Terra Delphox into a dark type here. High horsepower is doing 68% min if he's max attack. I don't think he's quite max attack, but he's close. So I do think I have to give up Delphox here. We'll just go for a Psychic. Uh, I think I can protect Spectre A. I think that's very obvious, but we we really just don't want to give him a double KO. And then I think next turn we protect with Braviary. Hope that th this isn't a weird middling speed. Actually, this probably always outspeeds Braviary because I'm not very speedy because I wanted to be able to undercut like Urshifu in Trick Room still. So this is tough. This is a tough end game. I could just switch Spectre or Delphox into Braviary immediately. Actually, that might be the play. Because I think he might high horsepower into the Delphox slot. So if I bring in Staravia, or sorry, Staravia counter the uh, Braviary and protect, I can protect with Braviary next turn. And at worst, um, it's a 2v3 when Trick Room ends. If he Ice Spinners the slot, Great. I think he actually has to double into it, and even then he might not get the KO because it's a very bulky Braviary this week. He's really thinking hard. Okay. So you bring in Braviary, protect. Caught the high horsepower for the third time. Nice. Uh, that's going well. Now we get to pick a KO with Braviary, assuming uh, we get the same roll as last time. He got the 49 51 roll on Grimmsnarl earlier, so I hope that we can get the same roll. I think Terra on Braviary makes sense makes us take half damage from Flash Cannon. So I will Terra. Is it more important that we have Spectre or Delphox in the end game? We've shown that both outspeed Heatran. Psychic definitely KOs it from where it is. 
uh, Delphox, both of them knock out Donphan from this point. Uh, and then if it's Arboliva in the back and Atera, I can't touch it, really. If it's Thunderous in the back, uh, I mean, I think Delphox is better to have in this endgame. The only way it's not is if it's Aqua Jet, like Bandit Urshi in the back, uh, which we can hope it's not. I can just protect Braviary here, I believe. Actually, we live every move this Dawn fan wants to go for. So I think I can just rock slide, get a little chip, knock out the Heatran, try to go for the double protect on Spectre. We do get it. That might be game winning. Uh, Braviary does undercut the Heatran. We get the chip we needed. That's a huge double protect, honestly. Uh, now we have a little more freedom. He does show our Believer last. I think we can Terra Fighting here and just hit this our Believer really hard and then Brave Bird the Dawn Fan. Alternatively, we could just Brave Bird the our Believer and Shadow Ball the Dawn Fan. So he does Terra Electric. Okay, Ice Shard. He did not show that the whole time. That's really cool. Terra Blast. Terra Blast. Nice. I think he wins off that. That's huge. I completely forgot his Terra was still in play. And that's massive. That probably wins in the game. Because I don't think Heat Wave will knock out Dawn Fan. And I don't think I live two hits from Arboliva. <sighs> Man, that was a great last turn play. I guess it was safer to Brave Bird Dawn Fan and just hit into this with. Terra Blast, but uh, you know, I just couldn't anticipate that. Yeah, I think I definitely Terra. I'm forced to Psychic into the Dawn Fan this turn. He protects, so he wins, guaranteed. Terra Blast does 50%, and we go for the Heat Wave Mega Crit. <laughs> we won't get it, but this was a great game. He played this super well. Ice Shards to knock me out, so great. Honestly, dude, great job hiding shard till the end. I assumed it was grass coverage. Yeah, that was massive. Uh, him saving that, just not showing it. Honestly, me throwing game one so hard with Trick Room was definitely a pretty big detriment. But I still think we could have brought it back. I guess if I would went with my initial play on that turn where he Terraed, I sharded. If I had Brave Bird this, it would have made it a 2v1 against Arboliva. I would have had close combat, and I would have had um, the Heat Wave or Psychic. So then he could only claim one KO. Uh, it still would have been close. It depends on how it was made, and it still had Citrus in, in play. So it, he may have still won either way. Honestly, though, great game. This leaves us at 5-2 and two for the season. I think this slots us in third, so we will be playing... Uh, seed number two in the Scarlet Division next week. Let me know uh, if you enjoyed the battle. Let me know what you think of the new mic. I think it's a lot higher quality, and uh, I hope it helps videos improve and it gets more people watching. So thank you again, and we will see you next week.